Hello everyone. <clears throat> so I'm here to present our work on um, some use cases we had with uh, PG routine. Um, so first I will present my company. I'm working for Camp to Camp. We are the largest European service provider in uh, geospatial open source software. We are uh, working from France, Switzerland and Germany and there are more than uh, 70 developers in the geospatial department and this is really a great place to work. <laughs> then about myself, I've been working more than 10 years in JS and for two years in Camp to Camp and I will present two of my projects, uh, Nexus and STSIK, on which I've worked for more than two years. So this is really a use case and application presentation. I'm, well, I will try not to be too technical, but really present what we worked on and how we tried to optimize and what we found out and just share this knowledge. So the first project is called Nexus. It's the next generation solution for firefighters in France. Um, basically, the use case is we have several trucks that we already know are quite close to an operation. And we want to help make a decision, uh, help to know which truck is the best suited to be the fastest to go on the operation. So this is a really specific use case because we have short routes, like really less than 100 kilometers. But we have many requests at the same time because we decided that we would pick between the 10 closest trucks, so we will be computing 10 routes at the same time. And they all go to the same destination. And um, we wanted to be as flexible as possible. That's why we chose PG routing instead of other routing engines. Uh, because we want to acknowledge closed roads because of clouds or anything that could change the graph when we are using it. Um, we have um, dynamic start and ends. Um, we are offering the service as an API. We are not um, writing any procedures in database. We, are, we have a Node.js uh, API which will send prepared queries. And for now, this project has only been tested on uh, saint -Emain, which is a small part of France. And the other project is uh, STSI Carré, which is a data and service provider for the French police and army. Your use case is not really the same because they want to provide routing for any of their users, so there can be short and long routes, but they won't have as many simultaneous requests as Nexus. And they want to um, not only compute routes, but also isochrones and maybe a tournée or for now it's just routes and isochrones. And they will need turn restrictions and the rest is the same. Uh, we provide the service as an API, and it's tested France-wide. Um, so how we tested for performances, this is uh, the data set that we use for Nexus. So you can see uh, the interesting part is that some areas are really dense, and some are really lightweight, I would say. This is one of the parts that we still need to work on. So we mainly used uh, Explain Analyze to understand how our selection could be fastened. And we also used um, a load engine, a loading engine, K6, which is open source too. And uh, we, with which we can describe several scenarios with various distances, various locations. And it, we didn't do it yet, but it can be automated uh, in a CI or... Uh, and I will present our latest results. So this is with a developer computer. Uh, with, this is standard uh, configuration, eight CPUs and 32 gigabytes of RAM and an SSD. On the data set that I showed you, with these four scenarios at the same time, 
uh, we have an average and um, max time for each result below one second. This, this was our goal. So currently we are glad about it. <laughs> but we will see that there are still optimization we would like to try and still some features that may make us lose a bit of performance. So this is still a work in progress. Um, so what we found so far, um, we have a goal to be below one second. So we, we are ready to use any uh, possible way to achieve this goal. And a simple truth is the fastest way to reduce uh, the time is to improve hardware. So uh, really, uh, if you have a goal, this is a way to reach it. Uh, then the number one truth about routing is that if you lower the number of edges, the algorithm has to process, really. It has an exponential impact on uh, the computation time. Um, we found out that processing uh, many, many routes in the same query uh, really helps. We, tried, uh, we discovered that with the many to one uh, um, overload. And uh, I will talk more about it, but really selecting the right edges is half the work and the other half is the uh, algorithm processing the, the, the edges. Um, so first, a little bit, little bit about PostgreSQL optimization because uh, PG routing is working uh, with PostGIS and PostgreSQL. So I already talked about it, but really uh, the hardware has a big impact on performance. Uh, actually, for um, STS Ikare, they tried to run our algorithm on HDD, and they just couldn't get an answer. <laughs> it was too heavy. I, I don't know which infrastructure they use, but they, they will transit to a more modern one. And what we found is that when we multiplied by two CPU and RAM, we multiplied by two uh, the performance. So it's really a quick answer if you need to achieve a fixed goal. Um, then a bit about the software. So we really encourage you to use the latest versions. Uh, we found out that the community is doing a really great job in this regard. Uh, we started with PostgreSQL 12, I think, and then moved on to the 13, and we will move on to the 14, and each version it's slightly better, and we gain in, in performance. And that's true, too, with plugins. We, we uh, gain performance when we moved from, uh, I don't remember which PG rating plugin we started with, but it, it got better, <laughs> especially with the new functions overloads. Um, a good configuration is, uh, will help you with uh, performance too. Uh, I, I'm not an expert with this, but I would advise to uh, at least go and see PG Tune. And also, uh, you need to help as much as possible the, um, the database to make the right choice when it's planning for the query. So uh, we gain performance with using CTE and indexes. That's true for any use of the database, but PG routing is one of the uses of the database. Now, specific for PG routing, uh, I will go quickly over this because it's already been presented by Vicky, but how to use PG routing, you need to choose the algorithm that you're interested in. Uh, for us, it was shortest path. And for Nexus, we didn't need turn restriction, so we went for Distra. You need to write an edge selection string, so you need to give uh, the, the engine a way to know which edges are part of the graph, and that's a great way to do it, because you can remove edges from the graph before uh, the processing. So usually you want to select only the edges that will be uh, pertinent to the query. You need to give start and end nodes, at least for now. So you, if you have uh, departure and arrivals that are not on the edges, like somewhere in the nature, you need to project those on the graph. And this is something you can do in the select query. 
so it might be computed on the fly. And what you get back in return is, in our cases, in our case, an array of order edges and the costs. And you can ask only the aggregated cost, but let's say you get uh, edges and costs. But you don't get geometry and you don't get attributes. So um, if you are only interested in costs, it's okay. But if you are interested in like uh, making a, a, a guiding paper or um, anything else, you will need to keep the data for later analysis. Um, so a bit about technical optimizations. Um, what we did was uh, uh, using temporary tables uh, instead of just giving a big select uh, function. So we are running in a transaction which is managed by our API wrapper. And what this allows? This allows for parallel subselect. This allows for uh, sharing data between the different parts of our process. So we need to select the pertinent edges, but then we need to project uh, start and end on those. And uh, we also need um, only the interesting edges for uh, contraction and decontraction. And then, uh, because it's, uh, we, we really need flexible uh, inputs, like uh, closed road traffic, we can only update uh, what was needed and not like all of France. We can keep the data for later use. And a big mistake we did at first is that we didn't index the temporary table. We didn't know <laughs> why our performance was so bad and then we added the index and really it's, we, we gained a two-time performance uh, by adding back the index. I can't give you uh, uh, well, the next slide about, is about indexes. I can't give you numbers on this because we started the project with indexes, like it's really your first reflex when you are working with database. So I can only say that when we missed the index on a temporary table, we lost a two-time uh, gain on performance. Um, so uh, I can only advise best practices here. This is the number one technical tool to help fasten the selection. In our case, uh, the selection is really geographical. We are interested in an area near the trucks, near the operation. So special indexes are the most powerful in this case. Don't forget to put indexes on any table, even temporary, that will be used in a geographical way. And also it's needed for clustering. So what is clustering? Uh, clustering is physically regrouping the data that will be selected together. Um, it has to be run any time the data changes because if, it's written, if new data is written somewhere else on the database, you lose, uh, you, you lose what we, uh, you have gained with the first uh, run of the clustering. So we tried this on both projects, Nexus and STSCRA. Uh, what we found out is that it's, we, we, uh, we noticed a gain when we did rather big selection on even bigger data sets. That's for STSCRA, which has long roads France-wide. But we didn't notice any gain when we did small selections for Nexus because it's really short routes like five kilometers max. And we didn't notice any gain when we tried long routes on Nexus because we were selecting the whole data sets and then when you are selecting everything, you don't need any, <laughs> any optimization, you are just selecting everything. Um, and we will, um, for now we are um, testing only on cinema on Nexus, but when we go into production and when we use all of France data, we will try again clustering and see if we get any improvement with this. Um, another technical optimization that we tried is um, dead end contraction. Uh, the idea is to remove uh, edges that you know you won't take because they are dead ends uh, and keep info to unnest the contraction. 
because you still want those edges if your start or arrival is on those edges. Um, what we found out for now is that uh, it's super easy to contract, less so to decontract, and we didn't gain uh, the contraction we gained, but the decontraction we didn't gain so much, so right now we're not using it. Maybe we're using it wrong, but... <laughs> um, now a bit more about functional optimization, I will try to go a bit more. Uh, so you have to choose between a number of uh, algorithms. Uh, it really depends on your uh, use case. Uh, do you need uh, turn restrictions? Do you need shorter pass? Uh, in our case for Nexus, we didn't need restrictions, so we use Gistra. And several optimizations are already offered, thank you to the community. <laughs> so we used um, bidirectional. There is no reason not to use it. It's like it's the same input, same output, and it's faster or the same, so you don't lose anything. And we really, really gain in performance with the mini to one because we decided we had ten trucks and we wanted all of the routes uh, at the same time. So instead of sending ten requests, we were sending only one request, and we gained a four time. Uh, performance benefits on this, so really, uh, really useful. Um, a little bit about data. Um, we tried many providers, OSM here, the French Bedetto pool. Um, this is really, the, you have to choose uh, depending on your use case and what you can get and um, so really, the, um, the most important part here is finding the right balance between precision and performance because uh, more precision uh, usually means more edges and more edges is less performance, so you have to, to decide. And also, uh, I would recommend pre-computing as much as possible on the cost and filter before using your data. Uh, most probably, PG routing doesn't need any attributes. It only needs cost and will you use the edge or not, and nothing else. Um, so, I, I was saying in the beginning, half of the work is selecting the right edges and then give them to the algorithm. So, what we did for Nexus is use the many to one. Uh, because we have only short routes. Uh, what we found out is that uh, it's more performant to use uh, index-boosted rectangular selection than um, many crossed buffers. At first, we wanted to only select uh, the, the edges that were along the axis from all the departs to the arrival, and it the complex buffer was taking too long to select, even if it was selecting less edges. So we went back to rectangular selection, but really faster. Um, for STSC carré, the use case is not really the same. It's only one long route, and so we are using a buffer along the axis, but the question is which radius for the buffer because it depends on uh, the density and do you have borders. I will talk more about it later. And as I was saying, only keep the attributes that are needed, otherwise it's, well, it will take more time for nothing. Um, a bit about caching. Yep. Uh, if you have several times the same root computation, you should cache. <laughs> um, we add this on Nexus because a part of it is batched or automated, so... But we still have a uh, few questions about when to invalidate. Uh, this is still a work in progress. We have some new optimizations that we want to try out, uh, some pre-computing and making the algorithm a bit more dynamic, like not the same radius depending on the distance, the density, do we have any borders uh, that might 
prevent us from finding a path from one point to the other. And we still have some new features that might uh, lower our performance. We want to try out to use some real-time data, maybe traffic. Uh, for our Nexus, we will use France-wide data sets. And we will use more complex filters, but this will be in the data pre-processing, so it shouldn't impact too much the computing time. Um, and in conclusion, um, the first point really, it's already documented in the PG rating uh, manual. Select as few edges as possible. This will uh, improve your performance. Select those as fast as possible with any tools that you are given, indexes and other. And really only compute what needs to be computed and when it needs to be computed. And that's it. Thank you for your attention.